So hello everyone and welcome to Talk of the Town with me, Lynn About Town, in my town of sunny Clearwater, Florida. And I am here today uh, via webcam, but it's the new here. And I'm here with my friend Will Seabrook. And Will Seabrook is an amazing, I'm just going to say it, he's a rock star. He's fantastic. He's a fantastic human being. He's got a wonderful wife and a wonderful career, and he's always impassioned and doing something good for mankind. So without further ado, I will introduce my buddy, Will Seabrook. Thank you. I will try to live up to the hype. You should be my hype man. You come on the road with me and uh, we'll I'll do warm it. Warm up the crowd. That's pretty nice. <laughs> so Will, I met you many years ago. You were performing. You were doing a set here in Clearwater. I did like a set that was Frank Sinatra. My daughter at the time probably was about 12 and she started singing along. And of course, and I'll tell you why, but she knew all the words. And so when you finished your set, you actually came up to her and you said, sweetie, you sang every word to every song I sang. How's that even possible? And she's like, Oh yeah, my dad, that's all we play at my house. <laughs> and and it was very cute and you uh, you you made her day and uh, yeah, I wish I was around with a camera back then. I didn't have a great iPhone back then. Right, yeah, yeah, it's super fun. I mean, I love kids, I love young people, I love encouraging young artists and um, people, people need encouragement, especially creative people. You know, you, it takes courage even just to do what she did, even just sort of quietly to yourself singing along. It's, it's encouraging for the performer. It's interesting for the performer to see that happening. And it takes even, it takes some courage just to do something simple like that. So I really just wanted to acknowledge her, you know, her creativity. What, what is that? What spark is that? Why um, there's something there, which I can certainly identify with as a singer myself, performer, you know, and I just like, when I see that in people, it's just fun to acknowledge what's going I on. I agree. I agree. So you play guitar, you sing, you write songs, um, but that's not all you do. But that's what I want to talk about right now, because I think that music is, as we know, the universal language, and it also uplifts something about hearing a guitar play or a beautiful piano piece you have to be half dead to not have it somehow affect you in a good way. And so um, how did you learn guitar and when did that all start for you? I sang a bit as a kid and just enjoyed that. I did a couple of performances, I think in church, things like that. In fact, I remember the first time I sang in First United Methodist Church in Moxville, North Carolina, and was just shaking like a leaf the entire time. I was pretty sure that I had just screwed it up every way possible. And then just got this incredibly supportive response from everybody in the community. And I, I'm sure in hindsight, being a kid, I probably was really nervous. You could hear my voice shaking, things like that. But it was interesting right away, I sort of saw that you can impact people. You can, you can uplift them, right? Especially in a context like that. And so I just kind of, I, I always enjoyed music and, and got a lot out of it. And then when I was a teenager, at some point I picked up my dad's guitar and started trying to strum. And I remember I had a, what's called a fake book uh, for Beatles songs. So instead of very thorough arrangements and things with lots of notes, they're very simple depictions. It's very simple guitar chords and, and easy keys to play. And it shows you where to put your fingers. So it shows the fretboard, the neck of the guitar, and then puts dots where you put your fingers. And so I just started doing that. And there's wow. video somewhere singing Let It Be or something and just painfully, slowly trying to move from one chord to another. And it was sort of as simple as that. And I think because I went about it that way, I didn't, I didn't take formal lessons and things. I just immediately sort of dove in to the things that I really wanted to do, I was able to sing a song in the first 15 minutes that it, where I picked up a guitar, and that worked for me. I think that if I had started with more formal lessons, I might have, uh, I don't know if I would have had the same response to it. So it was really, yeah. it was fun to just sort of dive into it. I could see where that would be the way to learn. I think it's very, very important, when, especially with young people to, just acknowledge them for everything that they're doing well and doing right. So 
the moment they express an interest in doing something creative, even if it, you know, it's like a violin lesson just sounds terrible the first 20 times you pick it up, right? You know, not a nice noise, but you have to start somewhere. And if you just keep acknowledging what's right about it and, and acknowledge that interest in that spark, you just never know what's going to come from it. Because there are so many times in my life where I might not have even considered making music for a living or I wouldn't have pursued it the way I did if it hadn't been for just one person here or there on the sort of periphery of my life taking a moment to acknowledge, hey, you, you sound nice, that's great. You know, and just that little bit of encouragement sort of kept me saying, okay, oh, well, he liked it, she liked it, that's good. Maybe yeah. I'll mess around some more and see what I can do. Mm -hmm.